It feels as though the industry of personal hi-fi has entered a crossroads. There are a variety of flagships and super flagship products on the market today that have their strengths and weaknesses and this has the potential to either hinder use case in all scenarios or be a detriment to the product itself. Let's take an example here from the planar realm. The Hi-Fi Mensasvaras, CMA's reference planar headphones due to its versatility and its ability to showcase the technicality of a product such as an amplifier or DAC. But you can't take this headphone on the go. You can't even plug it into subpar amplifiers with vast amounts of power because of the limitations of the performance. You have other products in the industry right now that specifically focus on comfort, design, and for a lack of a better term, a fashion statement. And yet they are subpar in the sound quality. So it's difficult finding a product that crosses all boundaries, whether it's genre or drivability or comfort or use case. I would not say it's non-existent, but it's few and far between. And the highlights have been the Meze Audio Elite, the Focal Stelia, the Lyrique from the company we just mentioned, but not many more. Debuting at Munich High End, this planar headphone of the super flagship category, the Binom ER from Camerton Audio, previously a speaker company, caught my eye. So much so that I spent half an hour at this booth. Because I think these headphones finally might have the use case, performance and drivability that we have all been looking for. This is Convince Me Audio. I'm Koji CEO. Let's take a look at these planar headphones. I would like to extend a massive shout out to Pete, extending a massive thank you to Aule and Pierre for lending this unit to CMA for review. I really do appreciate it. Pierre is an audio dealer in France, so if you find yourself in this region, all of his information will be down below. Ole, it was an absolute pleasure meeting you at Munich. So, a little history before we dive in into the headphones themselves. Over the last two decades, Ole has been refining and perfecting the speaker drivers in the Cameraton audio speakers. And taking this information and all of this knowledge, he wanted to apply it to headphones. Once these drivers were developed, he sent them out to China and to other manufacturers across the world to create a partnership so that they can be used in their headphones. This never came to fruition, so he revised the drivers himself over and over and over again and decided to enter the audio industry for headphones himself. The conclusion of the narrative being the Binom ER a planar open back headphone with no limitations of pricing, of materials, and as much as he could of performance. So let's dive in and have a quick look. These headphones are 5,500 euros. They come in this very light Apple-esque sort of box, the way the Abyss headphones do these days, magnetically clasped and you open it like this. Nice foam overlay so it doesn't damage the headphones. So let's spin this around and take out the headphones and the accessories. These are the headphones themselves, weighing at 410 grams. Excellent distribution of weight as you pick them up and set them aside over there. And we have a couple of cables nestled nicely within the foam setting. And those cables are copper of the purest category, starting with the headphones themselves. This Alcantara feeling fabric on the headband is luxurious, very tightly stitched and beautifully constructed. I think it looks much better in person than it does on camera. And it's a very understated headphone, genuinely. This is not gonna scream across the street the way the Focal Stelia does. I think you can get away with wearing this on the tube without anybody realizing what you have got on your head. The profile of the headphones is very small 
and the extensions of the arms is magnetic the way the Diana V2 was. It's very satisfying, but they do not extend a massive amount. So this is the largest setting of the headphones. For medium to small heads, I think this headphone is going to be perfectly fine, but for large and over large heads, I honestly think this might be a little bit too small. The way the Diana V2 was for some of our viewers. Looking on the underside of the headband, you have this very stiff foam material. This took about two weeks to break in. Initially, it was a bit uncomfortable. This is designed in the same manner as the Focal Utopia and Stelia underneath. So for me personally, I love a head strap, but obviously this is designed to be used on the go. This is a portable headphone in the open back category, but it's designed to be used on a desk, on the go, in a hotel, wherever your environment might be. And most of these headphones, as a rule, tend to go for this type of headband, monolithic headband. They're called, I believe, for this one. And it's more fashionable, in quotes, right? So the arms go back in magnetically like that. Very, very tight construction and contours. Then we come down to the cups. This is the baffle. The baffle is extremely thin on the cups. They're only about, I think if I was to just literally pry off one of these pads and uh, like ZMF, they have a circumference on the pads that clambers around this ring, which I will show you in a minute. This is how thick the driver is. This is unbelievably thin profile. It's fantastic. And then we rotate to the bottom of the unit. This is where things get very interesting. Ole has decided to use a USB-C connection on both sides of the baffle for the connection to the drivers. 24 pins, all used for audio, not digital. I've never seen anything like it on the market and I asked him at Munich why he made this choice. Because as you can imagine, custom cables are going to be a nightmare for this unit. He first of all said that my cables are literally custom cables. I make them by hand. I choose the absolute purest of pure cores. They have the price to match. Please check down below for all the pricing of all of these aspects of the headphone. And it allows for me to make the cups a lot thinner than they would be because this is a portable headphone. Even Stelia sticks out quite a lot. These don't, these are a very slim profile. The stock Binom ER pads is this leather one. Very deep set. Three fingers, yeah, definitely. It's quite a large opening. And this definitely is around ear, not on ear. Normally, a lot of portable headphones tend to be a bit in between, on ear and around ear. No, this is a proper around ear, which is fantastic for comfort. Using premium leather for the material, it's very, very deep. It's literally about an inch thick. This is amazing. And due to the fact that baffle and the cups being so thin, this headphone does not stick out too much. There is something to bear in mind. The circumference of the pads behind the pads themselves that goes around the baffle here when we put the pads back on is this stiff plastic material, which does make pad rolling these headphones a lot. Look, it just happened in three seconds, like literally like that, and it's quite stable. The only little gripe I have, it might be longevity. I don't know how long that plastic is going to last or is it going to stretch over time if you keep pad rolling. But we will see and I'll let you guys know in about six months. Seeing as these have been here for three months and I've been doing thorough testing, no issues as of yet. Those are the headphones. Obviously we have this carbon fiber material covering the drivers as well. This is complete open back, bear that in mind. There is also something else actually to bear in mind. With the leather pads, the pads do not seal completely around the ears. Behind the stitching, usually behind the ear, the pads are broken a little bit seal wise. To give you more of a subwoofer-esque bass response, Abyss tends to use this method as well and it works extraordinarily well. These are the cables that comes with the headphones, two of them. A portable one, about 65 centimeters, 3.5 connection to USB-C. The purest copper core has been used, I've been advised. And obviously, as you can imagine, pure copper, pure silver of the highest grade is very, very expensive. So consider these cables like custom cables because they are quite expensive to replace as well. This beautiful non-audiophonic cloth surrounds the 
core itself, which is great. The stationary cupboard has a Y split with two USB-Cs. This headphone can receive true balanced signal and 6.3 connection. So both of these cables are single-ended. This one has a slightly different material surrounding the core. And this one is a tiny bit more audiophonic and a little bit more stiff. I prefer the material for the single-ended side. Those are the headphones, that's the accessories. But you can buy additional accessories for this headphone. Before we move on, the headphones themselves comes with this carrying case that you can throw in your backpack. It's quite slim profile. It's not too bad at all versus some of the others like the Meze or like the Focal. And it's quite durable, very nice zip. And you've got a compartment for your cables in this fabric here and your headphones sit there nicely, but you can't put additional pads in there unless you cramp it a little bit. This is just for one setup. Throwing that over there. These are the additional pads you can buy. And honestly, the construction of these pads is incredible. I've only seen one or two other headphones with such attention to detail on the pads and the caliber and quality and feel of them. And that's the Spirit Torino Valkyria. The softest of Alcantara leather is used uh, surrounding the pad itself. This one is the slim pad. This one is much smaller than the actual leather one on there, to be honest with you, with a different sound characteristic. And this other one is much, much thicker like the leather with this literally like fleece material inside with this soft leather. Yeah, same as this one, soft leather surrounding the actual pads, providing a different set of sound characteristics. We'll discuss pad rolling after the sound section. Next, you can buy, in addition to those cables, these hybrid cables. Pure copper, pure silver hybrid, USB-C obviously. This one is in 4.4 termination, true balanced for me. And you still connect it to one side of the headphones and the signal gets passed from right to left or left to right. It really does not matter how you connect the cables, where you connect the cables, as long as you connect the cables. So that's the balanced one. It's a rubbery sort of braided feel, this one. It does not keep its shape. It's absolutely incredible. And uh, this is handmade by Ole himself. And the price is to match. Please check down below for the price for that thing. This one is a stationary one. I have the single ended, there's no point unspooling it over there. And this one is the balance. This one is 4.4 termination with a Y split. And this Y split is uh, true balanced, two USB-Cs on either side using the 24 audio pins on both sides. Doesn't matter how you connect it, doesn't seem to be a right or a left. Um, this cable is like the Meze cable, but thicker, heavier, more premium, and definitely does not keep its shape. And you can just spool it like this very, very, very easily. A quick uh, specification list for these headphones, as you can see scrolling down the screen here. This is a 42 ohm headphone, easy to drive. 135 uh, SPL, that's quite high. Distortion is at 94 dB at 0.01. Uh, 98 millimeter driver, they're pretty big. Who cares? Why don't we move on to the sound? Most importantly, how comfortable are these first? These headphones, like I mentioned, are for small to medium heads. That's the largest extension of the arms for my ears and my earlobes are literally inside the cups. The bottom part are touching the top of the bottom part of the pad, but very comfortable. Using the thinner pads, these ones, I can actually pull the arms back in magnetically, two clicks on either side. And with the big couch feeling incredible comfort pads, need full extension again. If you've got large or over large head, I think this might be problematic. Like the Diana V2, these headphones are small. The headband, I found them quite painful for the first two weeks because this foam was very stiff. Uh, this is how wide the foam goes from here to here. These parts don't touch your head and they're hard obviously, but the foam itself took about two weeks to break in and now the headphone utterly disappears on my head. This headphone is 410 grams. 
and the distribution of weight is fantastic. Genuinely, these feel like half the weight they advertise and I've been using them for four hours a day. Absolutely no problem. I alluded to something at the beginning of the video. Combining portability, maneuverability, at the desk or on the go, open back design and relying on very, very heavy, hard hitting equipment is not necessary. It's quite a tall order these days. LCD5, Sesvaras, Utopia, X9000, Shang Senia, Aperio. All of these headphones, the best of the best, from 5,000 upwards, require tremendous amounts of equipment, very large amounts of equipment to drive properly. You can take some of them on the go, but you get subpar performance. They're not designed for that. And that's a shame. The industry seems to be going in this direction and I really don't like it because it literally feels as though you have a 2.2 channel system on your head with the same limitations of not being able to actually take it anywhere with you. There are a few headphones that can. And I'm very glad to say, these are a standout of 2023. For the very first time, I don't feel as though I'm missing too much, even though I walk away from the desk. Let's talk about the headphones in stock form and its overall sound characteristics. The Bynum ER with these pads is a neutral dark headphone. It stands in line with the ZMF Atrium, the LCD5, the Diana V2. The music seems to be etched on a pitch black background. Mid-range is lush and slightly warm. The main focus of the audio experience tends to be on vocals, textural information, tonal balance, tactility and imaging. The stage on these headphones for portable use case using the SP3000 from Astel & Kern, the SE300 Luxury and Precision P6 Pro is small to medium. In headphone terms, the HD650, the LCD5, the Stax X9000. When you place these on tubes, like the LTA Z10e back there, or on a power amp craziness like the Siegfried from Spirit Torino, the stage opens up, but more in depth than in width. Its main characteristics is to put you front and center with the singer, face to face with the artist, so that it feels as though every expression on her face can be seen. The drivers are clean, so clean, so pristine, etched on that black background, it feels as though an artist is actually painting the melody using a mirror sheen taking a silver mirror and etching out every instrument on that pitch black background. The timbre of the Binom ER rivals the X9000, encroaching on the Hi-Fi Mansasvaras. Its main strength is its tactility, tonal balance and textural information. It's extremely resolving and it resolves even more when you put it on a higher and higher system, but it's not necessary to. Bass response does not roll off. I have tested this with 20 Hz tones, including music from Hans Zimmer and Infected Mushroom and Monster Cut that resides in the 20 Hz in a lot of areas, especially synth. It's extremely visceral in its sub bass category. When you climb up to the mid bass, it's very punchy, very articulate, and very clean without it being bloomy. It does not add anything extra. When there is punch necessary, it requires it. And yet overall, the treble region is laid back, it's articulate, and it's very detailed, but in an organic manner that does not put it under the microscope the way the Focal Utopia does. That brings things forward too much. And it feels as though you are analyzing the music and it's extraordinarily resolving but it takes away from the music because its resolvability is unnatural unless you put those headphones on tubes, which tames things somewhat. This headphone 
doesn't seem to matter what type of topology you use. Sounds better on tubes, everything does. I mean, come on. But let me bring some equipment onto the desk that we have been testing with it. Astelon Kern, SP3000. Astelon Kern, SE300. So we're talking about 3.5K, 2K, Cord Hugo 2 and to go. This is the most insane mobile station we have here right now. 3,000 pounds for this thing as well. So we're gonna place that over meow. Meow, 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 and meow. See, looks nice. I love companies that have been speaker companies that know what they're doing and then decide to create headphones. Like Focal, like Bowers and Wilkins, their headphones have something very, very special. Something unencumbered to the drivers that feel as though it's small speakers on your head. It feels as though that there are small speakers on your head and I genuinely like this approach. It's something different from say something like the usual LCD5 and hi fi Mensa Zvaras, etc. I will do some comparisons with some other headphones in a moment. On the SE300, this is a resistor ladder DAP, R2R. It seems to imbibe that information. This driver pulls out as much info from the organic nature, textural information and tactility, really leaning into that pitch black background and that slightly warm lush vocals, highly texturally rich drum skins, very, very visceral, strike of that bow and the resonances of the audio cavity of cellos and violins. Those of you who are used to art to art, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But what happens when we go to Delta Sigma, like the SP3000 and the Chord Hugo 2? You lose a touch of that. Fortunately, with the Hugo 2 and to go, you don't lose the black background or the SP3000. These are very high-end pieces of equipment, but what you do get is sheer incisiveness, speed, attack. So when you are listening to Infected Mushrooms Converting Vegetarians, for example, a track we use and an album we use on this channel a lot just to give you guys consistency, every edge of attack is feeling like it's trying to kick your eardrums through the back of your head. But tonally, as long as you have high-end equipment, you can get the best of these headphones up to 95% on the go. So for those of you who ask me constantly, will this work on my dongles? Will this work on my DAP? Yes, it will. To extraordinarily good effect. I want to talk to you now a little subjectively from my experience. This has been comparing to other headphones. In my experience, over the last 12 weeks I've had with these headphones, they've been on my head for well over 250 hours. Not because they're new, I have pretty much everything that the industry right now is bragging about for review. Shang Xenia, Aperio, Sazvaras, 1266TC, X9000, Elite, and the list is endless. They're all here. All the reviews will be coming, so you know what to do if you don't want to miss those. Headbutt that notification icon, kick that subscribe. Honestly, it helps us a lot and it makes the channel grow. And tell me in the comment section if you came across these headphones at Munich, because they're something special. It makes me reach for them because it leans into my preference, which is neutral dark, very engaging mid-range, excellent textural information and punch in the mid-bass, sub-bass that feels like a subwoofer yet clean and does not impeach on the mid-bass or upper bass region. Laid back treble so I'm not fatigued. And most importantly, drums. Drums are very important to me. So, how does the Binom ER compare to some of the other headphones? Because this is a very expensive headphone. This is 4,500 pounds, 4,700 pounds. Do the conversion into euros, you'll see. I think when you drive LCD5 to its fullest capability, the Binom ER is already 90% of the way there on very high-end portable audio equipment like the SP3000. And on the LCD5, I use the Holo Audio Serene Pre, the OR, the Hypsos, the Dave and the M Scaler. These are very resolving drivers. 
and they try and fit a market that really is barren. A flagship headphone that works on the go and at the desk, that is comfortable and that you don't really have to worry too much about equipment because you get a good experience with things like these. Even a dongle will drive them nicely. The only other two headphones in this category that does stuff like this is the Meze Audio Lyrique Focal Stelia and I think the new Diana MR, which we have not reviewed just yet. I'm glad that manufacturers are starting to consider people might want to move away from the desk. For the market that it's aiming at, portable use case and to be able to be driven pretty much by anything and sound good to exceptional as you go up, I think it's the best headphone on the market right now in the planar realm. Nothing touches it. I think if you have a variety of equipment at the desk and you are putting Sesvaras on there, Sesvaras is still the best planar in the world. But you can't drive a Sesvara with a DAP, not even close. Not LCD5, not 1266 TC, none of these. This is a standout product in a market that is already very, very leaning heavily towards large desktop setups. This says no to that. This says I am freaking great, even if you have to run out of the front door, as long as you take me with you with a portable source. And they scale up as well. When they scale up, stage gets bigger. Fortunately, bass response, textual information just highlights and gets better rather than, oh my God, this is night and day. No, it just gets better because it's already good. Let's talk about some of the caveats. What are some of the downsides to this headphone? Because there are some. For me, I prefer head straps to this headband. After a while it broke in, it's okay now, it's comfortable. I still prefer head straps because it utterly disappears, like the LCD5. I have known much more uncomfortable headphones than these, being the Utopia and Stelia with this type of headband. They use three quarters of the headband for that looks purpose. This uses pretty much over half for the pad, which is fantastic. Second of all, this headphone for some people might be a little too small and the arm don't extend a large amount so that for some people it actually might just not fit with very big heads. That is something to bear in mind. And the final gripe I have is the USB-C implementation, which is fantastic. He's planning to create a USB-C to USB-C with AMP and DAC dongle, so you can connect to all of your phones without anything else, just connecting directly to the USB-C or Lightning. So this is really future forward thinking, but I think a lot of us in this field who are spending five and a half thousand and above really do have a lot of custom cables and things that are completely useless. Also, the other thing being is that you are at the manufacturer's mercy for cables, right? How long does that cable take to arrive if yours breaks? That's a good important question we need to answer. The second one being, can other manufacturers replicate this USB-C audio cable? Not on digital, pure audio. This is very important, especially like across the world. If they want to create their own cable, how easy is it to create a USB-C audio cable? Only time will tell and I will update this video as time commences. So let's break down the frequency response of the Binom ER with a track. I'm going to use for this song, Billie Eilish Lovely before using an electronic song. The main focus here you find is on the mid-range. The trailing end of tones on the piano, you'll feel as though you are literally mouth to mouth with Billie Eilish. You can see every expression in her face. I've heard this song on the HE1 and the Lena DAC. I've heard this song on the Sesvaras and the DCS stack. And I've heard this song obviously on any other headphone we have around here like the Shang Senior, etc. And on the Binom ER. Vocals are utterly special on this. So texturally rich. Feels a little bit colored like pink in my mind's eye. It feels as though I can see every expression on her face. It feels as though every element and nuance from the low mid to the mid mid to the upper mid is so smooth that frequency response utterly disappears and it's just real vocals. That's the one thing that stands out about these headphones. Frequency response tends to disappear and you are left with the music. I am enamored by these headphones. I love how they sound. They are so smooth and non-fatiguing. If we go to Infected Mushroom, back to the source, that first 
boom, from the mid base, punches hard even on the go, and yet does not impeach that sub base down below. You've got a nice lift in the sub base region, a touch of elevation in the mid base when it requires it. The upper base is not thin sounding for any track ever. It's a multi genre headphone. Mid range, we just discussed. Treble region is laid back, well extended, and very articulate. The higher frets on a guitar, for example, Keith Dongo, that track I'm going to link down below, every pluck of that electroacoustic guitar can be felt. And yet it's not in your face the way Utopia is, it's just how the amp produces it. Applause, cracks, drumsticks, edges of drums, the harder hitting wood sounds are actually rich sounding and doesn't have any peaks anywhere because it sounds kind of realistic, which is what I love about these headphones, especially using this SE300. Where Sazvara on certain equipment can sound shouty in the upper mid range, this is smooth as silk. Even badly mastered songs, you hear how bad the track is being recorded or the mastering is terrible but it doesn't take away from that song. You can listen to songs from the 70s without any problems. You can listen to the latest and the highest resolution DSD and sound amazing. Macro dynamics is fantastic. Micro dynamics is excellent. Trailing end of notes, it's very, very realistic sounding in the reverb so that when the instrument does that attack, so that when the instrument hits hard, and then that reverb in the room or the effect that's been added post-production, that's where that trailing end of note resides rather than affecting the actual individual sound from that instrument itself. I love these headphones. Their tuning is to die for. In fact, in this category of 10,000 and below, I would choose this headphone every time, anytime to listen to music without having to worry about equipment and just go, I want something, I want to disappear in the song. Just, just, I don't want to think anymore. I don't want to do the audiophile thing. I just, I just want real music. This is what I reach for. And this is what I've been reaching for for 12 weeks straight. These have had more hours on it, I think, than anything else bar the Aperio here, which is kind of insane. Is it on the caliber of Aperio? Nothing is. But when I listen to this, do I want to take it off and then jump back to the Aperio immediately? Not anymore, no. First nine days maybe, now? No, it doesn't distract me. Let's discuss pad rolling. Using the thinner hybrid pads, this silky one, the frequency response changes. You have a slight V taper, ever so slightly. You have a dip in the mid range, the way Sesvaras does, around 1.5 to 2 kilohertz, where that lower mid range tends to be a tiny bit recessed. You've got a bit of more of a cooler sound. It loses the lushness and slightly warm nature of that mid range and sparkle. I find as though this headphone is genuinely like a ZMF Atrium, the QDC and all VX, and itself, and LCD5 all combined into one. It does this wonderful tuning that honestly I'm kind of obsessed with. But using this pad, you tend to get a bit more of a reference Sazvara sound with a bit more detail retrieval. You get a lot more detail in that treble region where it's a bit more forward the way Sazvaras sometimes can be on subpar equipment or the Focal Utopia on solid state. Bear that in mind. You don't lose the punch, you certainly don't lose the sub bass. But because of the foam material in these pads, it tends to take a lot longer to bounce back. So it takes six minutes before it sounds great the way it's supposed to. In the beginning, it sounds a bit pillowy and you lose a bit of that upper mid range in the ear gain region. So bear that in mind. It's not always going to be like that. Leave it on your head. The, the pads will bounce back after about five or six minutes and then you're good to go. This one is interesting. This is neutral, colorless, and to be honest with you, very insulated sounding, like a studio environment. For example, like Focal Clear OG, the way that does. Trailing end of notes tend to be not lost, but cascading in such a manner that you feel as though that there is acoustic treatment in the room and it's in a studio environment. It's very interesting. Mid bass takes even longer to sound natural. At the beginning, it's a bit pillowy and thumpy because of this foam material. It's very dense, it's very fluffy. It's like earmuffs for winter, this is insane. That takes a good 
good eight minutes to bounce back. Genuinely, look, I mean, if it, when I press it like that, it's slow and it takes a while to bounce back. But each of these pads, including the leather that's stock, gives you a different experience. And such a different experience, it feels as though you have three headphones in one. So I tend to use this one for about a week, then this one for about five days, and then the leather the rest of the time. Because it's not a quick thing. You, once you get used to it, you go, okay, this headphone's amazing in this manner, in this manner, in this manner. It genuinely does give you three separate environments. And these pads are not cheap, so please check down below for the pricing. They are constructed extraordinarily well and, oh, interesting. So you've got leather in the inside, this foam fluffy material that's like fleece on the outer edge, and then surrounding it is this soft leather. These pads are just, they're to die for. They, they're, they feel expensive, it's kind of insane. Valkyria has competition for their pads, I think now, genuinely. So in conclusion, should you buy this headphone? If you are constantly on the go, and you feel as though you have been unencumbered by equipment and your headphones are subpar, even on the go with the most expensive dApps you have, you still want an open back for a hotel or something, you buy Binomiar. This headphone is going to win an award this year. I've honestly been amazed by this headphone. I was at Munich High End, I still am three months later, every day. There isn't an hour in the day where I've gone, okay, that day I've not listened to Binomial. Art. I just do. It's become my companion because of that frequency response tuning. It's sublime, genuinely. There are a couple of caveats we discussed, but this is the very first headphone from Cameraton Audio. I cannot wait to see what he comes up with next. Let's do the scores. Material used, build quality, five tigers out of five. Comfort, four tigers out of five because of the headband took a couple of weeks to break in and I'm more fan of straps, but your mileage may vary. Performance, five tigers out of five because I think alongside Meze Elite and Lyrique and Focal Stelia, these headphones are unique. To count out of all of these flagships in the world, only five headphones that you can use on the go without worry is just not fair or right. It's, I mean, the industry is just doing something strange in my opinion. Overall, even using the USB-C implementation, which is an interesting take, this headphone gets a solid four tigers out of five for me, without a doubt. Well done, Camerton Audio. Thank you, Pierre, for sending this in for review. Thank you, Ole, for agreeing to send this for review. It's been quite a ride. I've been very enthusiastic. I thought Atrium tuning was the best for me and my tastes, but this is Atrium on steroids with more detail retrieval, far more technicality, and a much slimmer profile so you can take it on the go. Atrium has that as well, where you can put it on any equipment and it sounds amazing. This just takes it to the next level. And if you fancy reviews such as these before anyone else, we are finally doing YouTube full-time. From the 1st of October, this is our main line of work. Every share, like, subscribe, and your generous donations goes towards running this channel, getting you the best content we possibly can. And I thank you for the last two and a half years. I can't believe where we have come to and where we came from. You guys, my ambush of tigers, all of my tears, especially my higher tears, thank you so much. And I would like to extend a massive shout out to Jim. Thank you so much for your generous donation that allows CMA to edit the next five videos without worry. Absolute legend. Thank you for the support over the last two and a half years. Until the next one, peace.